Hello and welcome to the True How to Trainer podcast with me, Dr. Lisa. I'm your host. I'm a veterinarian and I'm also a Delta accredited professional dog trainer. And welcome to episode seven. Our dogs are talking to us every day, so why aren't we listening? And I'd like to welcome you to the podcast with this thought. And it's simply looking at everyday situations with a fresh pair of eyes, so to speak, and looking at them from our dog's point of view. Um, When we're looking at it from our dog's point of view, what we're doing is we're then starting to observe our dog's body language and getting an idea for what those body language clues are starting to mean in those different situations. And then we can um, then start to understand when we need to intervene for our dog and you know, move them away from a particular situation in case um, you know, we might see that things may not go so well um, and have a positive outcome for our dog or the other dogs or people in that situation. Now, the first thing I'd like to focus on is a couple of articles from a website called Silent Conversations, and Martha Knowles is the author, and she has a, uh, an independent, independently accredited qualification in canine behaviour, communication and well-being, um, and that was a, a, a course over a period of a year and a half, and she undertook that at the International Programme for Applied Canine Studies with uh and that's a course in a center um that has sheila harper as the um, director of studies there so i believe that's based in england now uh you can also look at her mission statement at the bottom of the page of each of those articles and it's a very nice sentiment and um mission statement that she has uh just in general so now the links are in, in the description and I want to focus on these two articles because we're talking about just um, the eyes, um, dogs' eyes, and how they, um, how different expressions can can um, uh, tell us what they're feeling in a situation. But I just want you to be aware that when we're trying to interpret body language in any context, we need to observe the entire picture and we need to look at all of the clues, as many as we can find, put them all together. Um, and then start interpreting those in um, in an accurate way, so we're not misinterpreting the picture um, that our dogs give. You know, the picture of the conversation that our dog is trying to you know trying to have with us. Um, so, so I, I just want to focus on a couple of things first, and then we'll look at some other photos um, that put that in a little bit more context overall when we're trying to. Uh, decipher a particular situation and whether we need to do something about it for our dog. So the first one is talking about the shape of a dog's eyes and we're looking at almond-shaped eyes. Now I'm going to read out a little paragraph that she has to describe a situation where this might occur, um, where our dogs are expressing this almond-shaped eye signal to us. So we have a dog is lying on the grass in the park. There is no tension in his body. He seems relaxed and his tail lies loosely on the ground following the curve of his back. His eyes are neutral and almond shaped and his mouth is slightly open at times. His ears are relaxed and to the side and occasionally they move around to listen to the sounds in the park. He slowly dips down his head and sniffs some of the grass in front of him. As his guardian approaches, the dog looks up at him, slightly squinting his eyes. His ears move back slightly and he thumps his tail on the ground in a slow circular pattern. So that's a really, really lovely image of just a dog just enjoying the environment and being nice and relaxed. So that's really lovely. So that's a lovely paragraph describing... um, you know, what sort of body language clues would accompany an almond-shaped eye of that dog and the circumstances surrounding that. So let's translate that into what it might look like um, in a picture. And I have a picture here of my lovely, darling girl, Jessie, who's no longer with us. But you can see here, this is the picture that conjured up the image that was the image that I, you know, thought of when I read that paragraph. And as you can see, she's, she's, you know, she's lying down. She's looking at the camera. She's got that nice almond shaped, almond shape to her eyes. Now she has one ear up and one ear down because she had a hematoma in that in that right ear. So, 
she she only has one ear up. So we can see the position of her ear. It's just nice, nice and you know erect. It's in its natural position there. It's not turned away or anything like that. So she's looking at the camera. She's got nice soft eyes. They're almond shaped. Her face looks nice and relaxed. Her mouth is slightly open. She's panting there, but she's it's a it was a warm day when that photo was taken. But something else that actually gives me the body language clues that she is feeling nice and relaxed, not just the almond shaped shape to the eyes and the facial expression in general. But it's also the position of her tail. So here it's just nice and loose there and it seems to be just draped around around you know her hindquarters there but her legs are nicely stretched out and they're nice and relaxed and she's just balancing herself there by turning that left paw out just to counterbalance herself and she's nice and comfortable so that's a really nice picture of what the image of that paragraph conjured up for me to show that a dog is relaxed and nice and comfortable with their surroundings so let's have a look at a picture that's not so relaxed even though we it shares some of the body language um, in the previous photo. So here we still see the tail and the hindquarters are stretched out and Jessie's lying down, but her head is actually facing down towards the ground and she's averting her gaze. Her, we can see that her ear is slightly turned, you know, out and back. So she's feeling a little bit uncomfortable, even though her eyes look reasonably arm and shaped. What's the big clue is that... Um, she's looking down and you can just see the tip of her tongue coming out of her mouth there and she's actually um, going to lip, do a lip lick and that is actually a canine body language clue that is telling us in everyday situations like this in a simple case where we've just taken a picture of our dog that they're not feeling comfortable with the situation so we can see very stark differences between the two photos now the next article I wanted to talk about from the Silent Conversations website was uh, another um, uh, canine body language clue and to do with the eyes and that's squinting or they, they call it shortening of the eye here and when your dog is squinting or shortening their eye that can be uh, like a you know, a signal to us to say that they're not being confrontational and that they're actually saying, look, I'm, I'm just coming here in peace and, uh, you know, I'm not a threat to you. So I'll read a little paragraph that she has got here that describes when that might happen in, in what context. So once again, we have a dog is sitting near a group of people on the grass in a park. One person who is sitting quite close is looking at the dog and giving direct eye contact. The dog averts the gaze of the person by turning her head ever so slightly away and softening her eyes by squinting. The dog is trying to give a non-confrontational response to the direct eye contact. Okay, so that's a really interesting image in my head and I thought of a particular photograph that might give us an idea of what could be happening, um, of, of you know how that could be illustrated in a photo. Now, here's one here, a picture of Jessie again. Now, um, once again, the person taking the photograph is front on to Jessie, so that can be quite confrontational. And here we can see that again, the ear is turned out and slightly backwards. She is closing her eyes rather than squinting, but she's also giving us a very big body language clue with this open mouth that's just going to go into a yawn and that's telling us once again that that yawn is just um, a tension yawn where she's actually trying to release a little bit of tension that she's feeling in that situation so once again Jessie's not feeling comfortable in this situation and these body language clues even though her eyes um, you know, appear that she you know we she could be closing her eyes in a, in a mild sort of squint really we have to take into account these other body language clues that she's showing us particularly the averted gaze um, because she's actually closing her eyes to avoid looking at us and um, the open mouth going into a yawn which is you know uh, showing her discomfort with the situation so there that's an interesting that's an interesting couple of articles um, just on 
eyes alone. And look, that's just a couple of, uh, of examples and there's many, 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 many more. Um, but it just helps you to get started in looking at your dog and understanding what they might be feeling in, in different situations, um, depending on the clues that they're giving us and either a very good place to start. Um, now, let's go back to the next example that I have. And I wanted to talk about now, talking about putting the whole thing into context, all of the behaviour or as many behaviour um, uh, body language clues as we can into context. I have just another photo and this is Marco and Jesse together. This is when they first met and we were just getting getting them to gently get to know each other. Um, this is probably a few days into Marco just arriving and Marco was a foster dog um, and I ended up adopting him because, well, how could you not? So here we have a picture of Jesse and Marco. Now look at the body language. We have not just averted eyes, but these two dogs are actually turning their bodies away from, from each other. And we can see that Marco is actually opening his mouth in a yawn here. And Jessie, although she is looking away, we can see that her mouth appears to be a little bit tight. She has her mouth firmly closed. And she's turning her body away. We can see that her legs are looking like they're tucking up to their body, particularly the hind legs. But the front legs are also looking like they're trying to get purchase on the ground in order for her to then lift herself up off the ground because she's getting ready to say, look, I'm not feeling comfortable in this situation and I need to leave. So that's a very common clue, uh, a common situation, everyday situation of dogs being in the same room as each other, same environment, um, and the, the clues that they are actually telling each other um, that I'm not feeling comfortable, so I'm just performing these little a little yawn to say I'm trying to release some stress here Jessie's turning away to try not to be threatening to Marco but the level of discomfort that she's feeling means that she actually may need to get up and walk away as well from the situation. So the next couple of photos I'd like to talk about I'd like to focus on the breed characteristics and the physical attributes of the breed and, and the dog that we're talking about in the individual circumstance and situation. So for example, if we consider a breed like a pug, um, they've got a lot of skin folds, they've got quite protruding eyes, and their facial expressions, their range of facial expressions can be very limited because of these physical attributes related to their breed. Now the photo that I'm talking about, and I'm going to pop that up now, we can see here that we have a Doberman and this dog I'm thinking this is an American photo, um, a photo taken in America, So, because the dog has cropped ears and also a docked tail, and that is not what a natural Doberman looks like. Um, so these have been surgically removed and altered. Now this has quite deleterious effects, not just physically, but also psychologically, because, and I think those two are uh, intertwined, because... When we consider how a dog communicates through the position of its ears, whether they're forward, they're pricked, uh, turned outwards, um, and also the tail carriage, whether that's um, high or low, and also to distribute pheromones when they're wagging um, and they're through movement, this dog has very limited ability to communicate with respect to these two um, these two physical attributes and that has then taken the ability way of this dog to communicate completely in a situation so that's something to think about and also just take a look at the language that's being used here control dominance and aggression with this two handle quick control leash so apparently it's a no pull bungee leash to keep your hands safe when your dog's running in a rush so I would also say that we would certainly not want our dogs to be reacting in such a way where they feel that they need to run off in a rush if they're, you know, being aggressive, particularly as this uh, photo suggests. But looking at the language again, and we touched on the language of the dog training industry and what language you're using when we're talking about training with our dogs, and um, that very much shapes our intentions when we're working with our dogs. So um, 
dominance again. We're talking about perpetuating the myth of dominance there. Um, and dominance is not a term that um, has a place in dog training or dog behaviour, in my opinion. It's an outdated and flawed concept. And when we're talking about aggression, we certainly need to keep that um, to um, keep that in context for the situation because if a dog is being reactive or aggressive, demonstrating aggressive behaviour from the dog's point of view, and this you know, relates completely to you know, the canine body language clues associated with um, aggression, which may have uh, many reasons for that demonstration, demonstration, but for all intents and purposes, if our dog is certainly acting aggressively in a situation, well, why would we want to um, put our dog necessarily, unnecessarily in a um, situation of distress and conflict where they feel that they have to react in that situation? So that's a couple of issues there that I have with that um, with that advertisement and the photograph, particularly with the um, uh, change to the, the uh, unnatural change to the physical characteristics of that breed. All right, so the next photo I'm going to be looking at is from a Facebook post and it's from Canine Enrichment Joy and I do quite like the post that they have but this one was just um, not as obvious on first glance when we, you look at the photo and you look at the post and you think okay well that's a nice idea but on closer study we can see that there's um, some things we need to um, keep in mind and that's firstly what the dog is trying to communicate to us through the, uh, through the body language. So the post is, if you have a reactive dog, please consider enriching their lives by muzzle training them. Um, and it's talking about how you know the you as a dog owner would have peace of mind knowing that you were doing your best to keep your dog and others safe. Um, and how the security of a muzzle relaxes the owner and changes the way that they act. But look, it's actually not addressing the underlying condition that the dog is feeling uncomfortable and stress, you know, distress and anxiety in that situation. So I would probably prefer that, um, you know, in this situation that you would keep your dog away from situations um, that would potentially cause them to be reactive, anxious um, or demonstrate aggressive behaviour because... Um, you know, your dog's acting like that for a reason. So why put your dog in that in that situation in the first place? Let's find some other structured activities and even positive reinforcement training and uh, working with, of course, with a professional, qualified professional that can help you with um, your reactive dog, rather than placing them in these situations, putting them up, putting a muzzle on them, um, and preventing them from reacting in a natural way um, to tell you that they're feeling uncomfortable because that natural reaction is being actually removed by having the muscle replaced. And I think one person did comment that um, they had seen uh, a situation where a dog had a muzzle on um, because it was a reactive dog but the dog was actually bitten by another dog and because the dog couldn't defend itself because it had a muzzle on then that dog was actually injured. So look, all sorts of things can happen. So it's it's just, on first glance, it's not an obvious conclusion that you would make. Let's look at the body language of the dog. Okay, so first of all, let's take into account the breed characteristics. So we have a greyhound. So, um, all right, the ear position. So we can't really read for much from that because there's a variation in ear positions and greyhounds. So let's look a, li a little bit closer. We can see arm and shaped eye. But, all right, in this situation, does the dog look relaxed? What else can we find to help us identify that? Well, there's a lot of clues that are telling me that the dog isn't relaxed. And for a start, the dog is panting a little bit. If it's cold, then that's a little bit more worrying. If it's a warm day, although, you know, the owner's dressed in some sort of reasonably warmish clothes, so we would probably suggest, and if this was taken in England, then it's probably quite cold over there now also the dog looks quite stiff on its four paws and the neck area and the head carriage the head slightly pulled back and looks a little stiff over the neck area as I mentioned but the tail is also tucked between the legs so I'm not convinced that this dog is finding this um, this activity enriching and the dog isn't looking at the camera but but that could be another another 
for a number of reasons. Um, you know, we don't know as to, you know, um, what circumstances this was taken with. Was the person actually looking at the dog and then the dog turned to face away from the camera and then the picture was taken? Or did the person, um, you know, sort of... Um, was was the person chatting to the lady and the dog for for a while, and the dog was just looking in that direction to to start with? So we don't know if the dog was actually turning away to avert its gaze, or if it was standing in that position. So there's a couple of things there with that photograph that are telling me that um, you know the dog isn't comfortable in that situation. Now the final oh the final photo that I want to go through with you is related to an article and this is an ABC article. Um, so the ABC article, it was um, brought to my attention by a colleague a few months ago and it's something that um, has stuck in my mind since then and um, this was the opportune time to sort of raise this, um, you know, just to sort of show this photo and talk about it. So it was an ABC News article talking about food allergies um, and how they're common in Australia and ways to help avoid them. Now, with this article, the photograph that they've included is really disturbing. Now, once again, on first glance, you might not see anything wrong with it, um, and you might think, well, what's what's all the fuss about? But let's take a really close look, because this is what I was talking about earlier when we are talking about keeping your dog safe, and you're going to keep your children safe for a start. So um, now they're talking about owning pets um, and the benefits of of, of uh, pets with respect to allergies. Now, look at this photo. We have a baby that's been propped in front of this dog, and this poor dog, He, for a start, he has a wall on his on one side of him and he's got a baby on the other and it's firmly blocking any escape that he has. Now based on the conversation that we were talking about with respect to the shape of the eyes, let's take a look at the, the eyes of this dog because again this is a fluffy faced dog and so it's hard to pick out any facial tension on this dog because there's a lot of curls and a lot of hair that are hiding. Um, you know, the muscles of the face here. And he also, this little dog also has floppy ears. Now, I'm, once again, I'm talking about this from the dog's perspective. Now, the eyes are wide. We can also see the dog's leaning back and the dog looks stiff. So this is a classic situation that's happening for millions of dogs across the world every single day. Dogs are being put in these positions where children are unsupervised and they're just very unpredictable they can't read canine body language and of course many dog owners cannot read canine body language effectively and they're putting their children and their dogs in these very very dangerous circumstances and when we think about it the dog is being labeled if anything goes wrong the dogs the the the, sh the blame is shifted onto the dog so what's really quite terrifying for me and that's not an understatement this is this really does make my my it just really does get my heart beating and um, makes me very anxious when I see these sorts of photos because this dog is demonstrating I'm not feeling comfortable in this situation my eyes are wide I'm moving back my mouth is tight I cannot escape but the child is unable to read that body language because it's a baby it's a you know it's a, a little baby um, and so this dog is going to have to keep demonstrating body language clues that are going to be more exaggerated and progress down a path where then they are finally having, they have, feel that they finally need to resort to the lip curl, which then goes to the growl and then may go to an air snap. And if nobody's paying attention to the dog or listening to the dog, understanding what the dog is telling them in this situation, what if the dog is screaming to them, please help me, um, I'm not feeling comfortable in this situation, then this is where we have situations where children are ending up being bitten by dogs. And this is a very sad circumstance, not just, of course, for the child that's been bitten, but a terrible circumstance for the dog. Because a normal, well-adjusted and socialised dog will always show us a range of body language clues before they feel they have to resort to, you know, raising their lip, 
um, growling um, and then resorting down the track to a snap um, or, or a, you know, a, a, a bite. So this is really distressing for me to see this sort of photo. And I'm hoping that after, you know, we sort of um, reflect on this and you reflect on the, you know, what you've seen today, what I've, what I've talked about, you'll start looking and for these situations and be more vigilant for when you might be putting your dog in these situations and your children in these situations as well. So that's what I mean when I'm talking about the circumstances that can not go so well when I was mentioning that at the beginning of the podcast. So that's a really interesting photo, but it is also rather um, rather scary to see. And that is... A situation that's happening across the world globally to millions and millions of dogs every day in everyday situations. Now the one thing I just wanted to um, talk about just again with the breed characteristics. Now when I talked about the fluffy dog we couldn't see the facial muscles so we, we couldn't really get a full picture of that dog but we could see enough information there to really make us um, understand that we need to you know move that dog to safety and then the child will be safe um, but let's consider how some breed characteristics or some different breeds actually may look confident and so their body language clues can go unnoticed because we're just taking into account the way they're standing or their um, uh, their, their body posture rather than those other clues that are very subtle like the eye position um, the the facial expressions and the ear positions and things like that so a couple of breeds that I thought thought about were the Basenji and the Fox Terrier now if we think of these two breeds they've got physical attributes that actually make the outward appearance of both of them look very confident um, but for these dogs we need to look even more closely for any other signs and once again the facial expressions the lip licking yawns tongue movements whether they're panting um, their, their uh, entire body posture and also take into account uh, their, their tail position as well um, and although the Basenji will have a highly held tail position um, so yeah, so that's one thing with that with that breed as well that we can't rely on. Um, so so that's just another on the flip side of looking at other breeds that do look confident just based on the way they na their natural stance, um, you know, and their weight distribution occurs can belie some of the other emotions that they may be feeling when we think about the other subtle clues that I was just talking about before so taking them all into account and of course the context and the situation that they're occurring in um, and another thing about those two breeds is that they also have a really more robust appearance in their shoulders and their neck and their front quarters and their heads held higher um, a little bit you know that they carry their head higher as well and so they have the appearance of leaning forward and that appears confident so you know and and more attentive or in in you know interested in in their surroundings so looking at the breed characteristics and the physical attributes of your dog um, based and related based around and related to their breed and how this can help or hinder it hinder us when we're trying to interpret those body language clues that they're show, trying to show us well that was a very complex topic um, and I think it's probably a good place to stop the podcast um, now so thank you for joining me i'm dr lisa i'm your host and this was episode seven our dogs are talking to us every day so why aren't we listening hopefully you've gained a bit of a start in understanding canine body language and how you can start applying it in everyday situations for your dog to um yeah to improve your dog's quality of life but also just to um understand that um, you know, if we keep our dogs safe as well, then we're, we're going to be keeping our children safe in everyday situations too, which is very important. So uh, as always, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter and on Instagram. I'm at The True Hearted Trainer. And if you'd like a free copy of my ebook, Five Essential Concepts of Dog Training, please inf uh, email me at info at vcabs.com.au. All right, well, thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you next time. Stay positive.